Warner recently released a new HBO Max promo where the number four has been removed from the title of the next Matrix film. Now this could indicate that the new installment in the franchise will simply be titled Matrix, though it could just be a placeholder until the official title of the film is announced. We still have some time before the marketing push begins, so let's go ahead and answer some more of your questions regarding the Matrix and how some of these answers could affect the fourth Matrix movie. Could the Resistance use nuclear bombs inside the Matrix? Why did the machines create the Oracle to investigate aspects of the human psyche? And what is Sati's true purpose? Welcome to Matrix Explained. Welcome to the desert of the real. Our first question comes from user Desmond34R. In Matrix Revolutions, Sati is under the Oracle's care. So does that make her the successor to the Oracle? What is her purpose? In one of our previous videos, we talked about the origin of Sati and her family. Her mother Kamala was a creative software programmer. Sati inherited part of her mother's creative programming as we see her learning how to make cookies with the Oracle. Remember that these cookies do not exist. What's happening here is that the Oracle is teaching Sati how to program. However, Sati's purpose goes beyond being the possible replacement of the Oracle. So far as we know, Sati is the first truly free entity in the Matrix. Let me explain. The machines create everything with a purpose. Each program is created to fulfill a task. Every story you've ever heard about vampires, werewolves, or aliens is the system assimilating some program that's doing something they're not supposed to be doing. And why would a program be deleted? Maybe it breaks down. Maybe a better program is created to replace it. Happens all the time. And when it does, a program can either choose to hide here or return to the source. Nothing and no one is created without an objective purpose, not even the humans. The purpose of the people of Zion is to serve as emotional manipulation for the anomaly. All sentient beings has a predetermined purpose, all but Sati. She is the first to be born without purpose, without predetermination. You could say that this little girl is the first entity to be born free. This is why we believe that part of the anomaly's code may have infected Sati. Smith infected every inhabitant of the Matrix, but none of them inherited the anomaly's code after Smith was destroyed. This is because they all had a purpose. The only empty shell, so to speak, was Sati, which made her a suitable receptacle for new protocols. However, Sati's purpose couldn't be to become the destroyer of the Matrix. After all, she is the first program to be born out of love. She shares her mother's programming to create, not to destroy. Sati's story shares several parallels with the story of Moses, who as a child was placed in a basket and was sent down a river to save his life, to then later be adopted by the king of Egypt. Sati was sent on a train to the Matrix to save her life and ended up being adopted by the Oracle, who was practically royalty in the Matrix. These parallels with the story of Moses could lead the fans to believe that Sati might become the savior of everybody, just as Moses was when he freed the slaves. She will free the people from the prison known as the Matrix in the next film. At least that is what we suspect her purpose to be. The next question comes from Michael Arnu. Could the Resistance use a nuclear bomb inside the Matrix? This is a very interesting question because we have seen how the red pills bring in weapons to the Matrix. Inside the construct, the Resistance can upload vehicles, armaments, and other useful tools to aid them in their missions inside the simulation. Though we've only seen assault weapons being spawned into the Matrix, it could be possible that the red pills can upload larger weapons to use them inside the simulation. Neo and Trinity did use a bomb in the Matrix, remember? So in theory, they could use hemodynamic or nuclear bombs inside the Matrix, but these weapons will cause more damage than needed. The Red Pill's mission is espionage. They covertly enter the Matrix to fulfill certain objectives, then leave. They analyze potentials and gather information. Using a weapon of mass destruction in the middle of the city 
would only hurt the humans trapped inside the simulation. No matter how powerful or destructive the weapon used on a program's shell is, they will just find another shell. Therefore, the only damage caused to the machines by using nuclear weapons inside the Matrix is to their source of energy, the humans. Which isn't that big of a problem, as the architect once said. You won't let it happen, you can't. You need human beings to survive. There are levels of survival we are prepared to accept. But coming from this same idea, it might be possible to spawn in from the construct, structures, heavily armored vehicles, and other big tools to help the red pills on their missions. The next question comes from Richard CPR. Why did the machines create the Oracle to investigate aspects of the human psyche? We've answered this question in many of our previous videos. So to reiterate, we believe that the machines created the Oracle because they couldn't understand human irrationality and behavior. Multiple versions of the Matrix failed because the architect only sees numbers and equations. He only uses logic. The architect does not or cannot take into account the human's emotional and illogical decisions. It wasn't until the Oracle's help that the Matrix began to be more effective. Ergo, the Oracle was created to understand and predict human behavior, possibly during the first war between humans and machines. The Oracle may be the oldest program in the Matrix lore. Thus the answer was stumbled upon by another, an intuitive program, initially created to investigate certain aspects of the human psyche. If I am the father of the Matrix, she would undoubtedly be its mother. The Oracle. The origin of the Oracle was not to be the mother of the Matrix. She's a repurposed program. Therefore, we believe that she might have been created during the Second Renaissance. One last extra question comes from one of our members. What happened to the regular old human that Neo body snatched in Matrix 1? There's a regular Joe Schmo who was living his best life and then got doubled body snatched, first by Agent Smith and then by Neo. What happened to that guy after Neo properly unjacked at the end of Matrix 1? Okay, when Agent Smith confronts Neo at the end of the Matrix, he body snatches between multiple people. The homeless man at the train station, a passenger from the train, an elder lady in her kitchen, and so on. The person who is possessed by an agent doesn't know that he or she is being controlled. They black out. Once the agent no longer needs their current host, they move on to another victim. The recently freed human will never know what had happened. They will just wake up and move on with their lives. That is, of course, if the person wasn't injured, killed, or awoken in the middle of a war zone. We can't assume that the possessed person's consciousness returns to their shell once it is available again. What happens in the final fight between Neo and Smith in the Matrix is that Neo enters Smith's body and explodes it into pieces. Neo doesn't possess Smith's current body as the agents do. What he did was destroy the possessed victim's residual self-image. So in other words, the victim's shell was destroyed and couldn't return to the Matrix. What happened to that person is up for debate. Without a shell to return to, the human could have died in the simulation, or they could have awakened from the Matrix and died of shock, or maybe even survived the awakening and was flushed out of the power plant to die alone in the real world. Let us know in the comments what other questions you would like us to answer. For Matrix Explained, please leave a like and subscribe. And thank you for visiting the Desert of the Real.